live from Boston, Massachusetts. It's The Cube at the HP Vertica Big Data Conference 2014. Brought to you by HP. With your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here day one wrap up of two days of wall to wall coverage here at the HP Vertica Big, Day, Big Data Conference. This is theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante and Jeff Kelly breaking it all down, talking to the decision makers, the thought leaders, the influencers, the CEOs. We had startups on, we had public companies, huge, huge uh, practitioners, great data. We had a lot of guests talking about DevOps, APIs, notification, closed loop. We're talking about growth hacking, product CEOs, talking about the data, the growth areas, practitioners, best practices. Um, uh, Jeff, um, you're the analyst and big data, leading analyst. Tell us what's going on. You were on the morning session, then went in, scouring the, ho the halls for stories. Mm. What are you finding? Uh, well, you know, excited crowd here. Um, I think you know, this really is focused on users and practitioners, and that's the vast majority, majority of the attendees here. So uh, yeah, I was able to pop into some of the sessions. So you know, it's a good mix of both technology-focused technical sessions where you know you got developers, you know, uh, really digging into the, the guts of the technology, and then you had a few business-focused sessions talking about things like um, you know how to how to sell big data analytics in your organization, which is a key one of the key challenges out there for big data practitioners. Um, so yeah, a good mix here today uh, on the cube. You know, I was able to uh, listen to a lot of the segments, a lot of the interviews you guys had, and sat in on a couple myself with. Uh, uh, Cardlytics in particular, uh, some great, great practitioner stories. I mean, I think a lot of good insights both around the tech and again around the, the business value that they're driving with big data and with Vertica. So yeah, all in all, a really good day. Tomorrow we're going to have you know, another good day, going to have a lot of practitioners, also going to have uh, probably a few more partners on tomorrow. Um, I'm interested to, to listen to some of those partners because I think for, for Vertica to really um, reach its potential as a business, uh, you know, inside HP, they've got to really de uh, develop that partner ecosystem. Um, in order to reach the developer community. So, you know, I'm really going to be keeping an eye on that uh, to see how that plays out. Uh, you know, obviously we know HP is still in the transition, their five year transition. So, um, it's, you know, big data analytics is a big part of their, uh, of the future that they're betting, they're betting on here at HP. So, uh, it's important to kind of break out that, uh, kind of how that business is doing uh, and get an understanding from partners, from customers and others. So, looking forward to tomorrow. So, Dave Vellante, I want to ask you a question about the big picture. Obviously, we have a lot of folks interested in big data today um, all around the world. We're getting, getting a lot of requests on Twitter. I'm getting pounded on Twitter, a lot of DMs. Crowd chat is exploding. Of course, tomorrow we'll be on the main stage. If you're watching, go to crowdchat.net slash HP Big Data 2014. We're going to be on the keynote. Uh, the Cube will be up on stage. But I want you to give you the big picture, Dave. What's going on in the big data? Break down a very high level to folks sitting on their couch at home watching the analysts and the, the people in the tech industry. What the hell's going on with big data? What's your take? So I think a couple things. One is um, we've talked a lot on theCUBE about how this is early days of big data. You know, we're in the first inning, et cetera, et cetera. But the train has left the station. I mean, you think about last year at this conference, you, you know, the, the, the sort of Hadoop world and the Vertica world weren't as fused as they are today. And what you're seeing is the traditional data warehouse, everybody's, I think, coming to the recognition that it just ain't getting it done. Uh, they're realizing the economics of modern platforms, uh, certainly like Hadoop, are so attractive. And to me, Vertica sort of sits in the middle um, and is an interesting uh, arbiter of those two worlds. And so it's very clear to me that resources are being sucked out of that traditional EDW world and they're clearly going into Hadoop and other you know, modern architectures and building analytics on top, that's where the value is, pulling out those insights. And I think this, a lot of people are careful to say that they've got partnerships and they don't want to you know, piss off their partners. Um, a lot of the CIOs don't want to send the message to their internal folks, well, the traditional EDW, we're going to you know, be, be investing less and less in that going forward. That's exactly what's happening. Uh, and that's the big picture. We are seeing a share shift from the traditional EDW world, which did not live up to its potential of its 360 degree view, its real time, its business insights, shifting to a world that appears to be living up to that promise with large data sets, you know, not sampling anymore, real time with data in memory uh, and blending you know, so-called data lakes, or John, you like to call them data oceans with other technologies that allow 
people to make and machines to make decisions in real time. And I think that's very clearly what's happening. What, you, what, what would you add to that, John? Uh, well, I think well, one thing, if you're watching this, this video today, you'll see that the inside of the baseball with HP is, a, obviously HP has a huge big data opportunity. Their customers have a need at scale, either a large enterprise that has a lot of stuff that's legacy or it's been around for a while, and or new, their, their customers that are moving on new opportunities where they're redesigning from scratch, clean sheet of paper. That means they're hiring young kids, young guns, young talent who are the new coders, the new analysts, the new data scientists, and the, the young millennials, if you're under 30, will be looking at the world completely different. They do not want to use the tools that the old folks are using. That's the bottom line. Bottom line is there's the old and new. We're old. The young kids want new stuff, and they don't want to use email, they don't want to use voicemail. They use social channels, they're coding differently. It's just a different tooling environment, and that sea change from a user experience is critical. CB from Etsy said it best when he said, interface is everything. That's not from a coding standpoint, that's from a user experience. Mobile has proven, hands down, that the dollars are on the table. People will use mobile. The younger generation certainly is using mobile. Um, and the older guys will still have their channels, but for the most part, that's the key thing. Now, startups in Silicon Valley have recognized this. We had the young guy from Localytics talking about DevOps. This is the new reality. That big data is about the cloud and new innovations, and I believe you're going to see billion dollar companies come out of this, this marketplace. Big data will be looked back in history as a moment, a watershed moment in, in economic history where wealth was created and shifted by mm -hmm. a huge transformation. I think every industry, every person's at risk to being disrupted and supplanted if they're an incumbent. So to me, I'm so bullish on big data. I think it's more than an industry. I think certainly, you know, Wikibon, Jeff, you put out the first study on big data three years ago, uh, was over the top in people's minds. I still think conservative that big data will be in the hands of everybody. Yeah, I would just add um, to kind of, Dave, what you said and John, what you were talking about, kind of this old versus new, the old EDW versus these new approaches to big data analytics. Um, and the, you know, there are a number of factors that kind of uh, distinguish one from the other, and cost is certainly one, uh, flexibility is another. But I think one of the keys is, you know, the old world is about looking back. The enterprise data warehouse is about looking in the rear view mirror. Big data analytics is about looking forward, making, predictive, making predictions, uh, understanding your customer better, and being proactive versus looking in the past. I think that's really the, one of the big shifts that we're seeing uh, among practitioners of big data analytics and how that's really changing businesses. The other thing too is, you know, I was looking at your survey, Jeff, and, and there's a, the data point in there about how much data, you know, are you actually processing in your big data projects, and it's, it's not a ton. No. You know, we're talking 30 to 90 terabytes is the median, um, as sort of uh, uh, one point. Uh, and then the other thing is that we didn't get into, because we kept running out of time, uh, with the Vertica guys, is developers. <clears throat> John, this is something that you and I took up with Robert jo Young Johns last year at uh, HP Barcelona. <clears throat> and I, I want to poke on that a little bit. I want to, you know, tonight, talking to the practitioners and talking to some other developers is to really get a, a, a beat on what HP are doing there. I think HP knows it has to increase its mojo with the developer base, but let me ask you, is it getting it done in that regard? You know, I, I don't think HP's getting it done with the developers, and I'll tell you why. I think they're early and they're attracting a different kind of developer. So the, my answer, they're not getting it done with the developers. I want to caveat that by saying they're not winning the hacker news developers yet. And I think that is on track. I think that's not their short-term objective. Jeff, you might be have different data, but from my standpoint, looking at the buzz and the social proof, HP's track record right now is innovative with Vertica. I don't think a developer will look at HP and go, wow, I really want to work with HP. Just like this, they don't look with IBM. IBM Blue Mix has the same problem with their cloud. No one wakes up and says, hey, I'm going to trust IBM because they got this new Blue Mix thing. I love Amazon. People love Amazon, right? So that's an issue, right? But that's the young developers. But youth is not always the issue. If there's money to be made, HP has to make the market. And I think what they've done with OpenStack has been an interesting shift where they brought in Mojo on the open source side. So I think HP's open source presence with Fink, Hortonworks, now you're starting to see the DNA of the company shift towards more of a mm -hmm. cultural shift where they're aligning with the audience and saying, hey, we're open source driven, we have a platform and customers who need help. So there's distribution opportunities for the products with developers, which are entrepreneurs, and also, um, customers who will pay, right? So you got distribution for payment and solutions to actually solve someone's problems. Those two things get done right, 
developers will blow it to win. At the end of the day, they love their product, give me a reliable place to code, get, make some money, solve some problems. If they can do that, they'll win that. Right now, I just see that in year two of the build out. And I think they're, they're on the right track and just got to sharpen the saw a little bit more to make that happen. So that's my, again, my opinion. The other thing that came through loud and clear was you know, the preponderance of, of Amazon. Um, you know, again, in your survey, it showed a lot of cloud, mm. um, but the feedback that we got from a lot of folks was, eh, you know, we're doing mostly on-premise stuff. You talk to these, this crowd, and I've, I have to say, I've always been impressed with the Vertica customer crowd. They've been, they're pretty advanced, uh, and I think you surveyed a lot of the early adopters. This is an early adopter crowd. Uh, in fact, they hopped on you know, Vertica as a way to solve their EDW problem, yeah. sort of predated Hadoop, and then they said, oh, Hadoop, bring that on too. Uh, and these guys are very cloud friendly, um, which again, your survey showed the early adopters, the leader, leading thinkers in this space are you know, cloud aggressive, but a lot of feedback you got on one-on-ones is, oh, you know, much of our stuff is, is on premise. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is, nobody's paying for Hadoop. <laughs> you know, we're, we're seeing that yeah. Well, consistently. We, we, yeah, we found yeah. about a quarter of respondents of the Hadoop practitioners are actually paying for one or another of the, of the distributions. Not one of the guests here today, no. when I've been asked several, we're, we're paying for it. Well, and that's obviously a big challenge for the Hadoop community. I mean, you're seeing... It's upside. You're seeing folks like Cloudera <laughs> say, well, then we, that's why we need to move up the stack with things like Impala, to, to, so we can really uh, you know, drive some revenue. Uh, you've got a very different approach at Hortonworks, which is focusing on open source and is going for volume versus you know, uh, per unit pricing. Um, they're betting they can, they can turn into a billion dollar company by basically being the de facto Hadoop player. So, remains to be seen who's going to win that. Well, market, there's an advantage to being the de facto Hadoop player. Oh, absolutely. Player, I don't, but, that's not, but that's different than what, what Cloudera is doing. Cloudera, I think, is focusing on more of their IP, and they're trying to really, they're trying to be a, a more of a traditional software company and deliver a full, almost a full stack of solutions. Hortonworks has very clearly said, We're just, we just want to be that Hadoop Layer. Guys, you you want to be the guys, one and only. So I, I love all this conversation bantering. You know, not to put a wet blanket on, on your enthusiasm, but like, no one really cares until the solution gets delivered. What's happening now is the market's growing so fast. All the rhetoric aside, it's going to come down to the, the scoreboard. The scoreboard's about value, and the value creation right now, the market's already voted. Jeff, you were, you talked about in the earlier segment this morning. It's going to come from practitioner deployment. At the end of the day, that's not a Cloud Data Hortonworks conversation. <laughs> no, that's a, HP's got a huge install base. That's why I'm bullish on HP on big data because they have the install base. So they're, they get the keys to the kingdom and I think everything else is just industry discussion. It's going to come down to the scoreboard. At the end of the day, what's on the board in terms of sales, sales means value, people will pay for value. Um, certainly open source being free will help, but that's, that's, that's my opinion. Okay. Um, that's a wrap here, day one here at, in, live in Boston, Massachusetts. This is theCUBE. We'll be back tomorrow, day two. Keep watching, and of course, go to crowdchat.net slash HP Big Data 2014. We're going to have a flash mob tomorrow morning, 8.30 Eastern time. Come join the conversation. We'll be on the big stage on the big board here at the event. See you tomorrow.